kid up to 18 months that is one and a half year there primarily needs to be no screen time everything has changed or maybe there are some unique challenges that parents are facing there are many days. challenges that the current parents have to face maybe our parents didn't have to face in their age primarily because tech is a huge <laughs> in flux right now and parents have to deal with the digital pressures the size of the parenting pressure so, uh, as screen time is increasing among toddlers and babies so how is is it maybe you know negatively impacting their behavior very interesting article i read by unicef recently that said that you know babies need humans they don't need screen hello amazing parents welcome to uptots family today in this podcast we have a very special guest for all of you that is dr mahima sahi she's phd in clinical psychology and program director embrace and through her we aim at discussing few potential problems that all of you might be facing plus their potential solutions so that you can have an expert opinion on the same this podcast is divided into two parts and the one which you're going to watch now is part 1 so parents what are we waiting for without waiting any further let's dive into the podcast now So we'll just uh, move ahead in the podcast, and I'll just ask you a few questions, and then we can, you know, have your honest viewpoint over the things, so that accordingly we are able to understand how, as a budding psychologist, you also, you know, you have been practicing also from so long over the field, yeah. how things are catered by you, or mm-hmm. maybe how your perspective is over there on those aspects. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, Dr. Mahima, if you can tell me, like, you know, right now, if I talk about. Times have changed. These are not the times in which we were like you know maybe brought up and everything. So how do you feel that parenting has changed, or maybe there are some unique challenges that parents are facing these days, or maybe do they really require a support system more comparatively to the past? Sure, I think like you rightly mentioned, the ecosystem in itself has changed. What parenting was twenty years back is not the same right now. there are many challenges that the current parents have to face maybe our parents didn't have to face in their age primarily because tech is a huge <laughs> influx right now and parents have to deal with the digital pressures the size of the parenting pressures and because the work environments have also changed primarily parents are both working so navigating this digital environment influx and then dealing with the societal pressure of being a parent and then having the stress of parenting as such because you have to balance work and balance life as such has kind of come up and i truly think that support is required right now in the parenting journey for parents who are becoming parents now or who are first time parents or who are early parents because there all these factors of tech coming in digital environments changing your work and your family life having a need to be balanced because both of you are working it's led to a need of a uh, professional support but beyond that it has created stress and uncertainty because these were pressures we were never accustomed to as individuals we've never seen our parents deal with it so there is no source of vicarious learning per se also we don't know what to learn via observation so whatever we would do is what we'll do instinctively or read up articles or maybe try to google it which may not be the best sources to kind of be a healthy parent per se so I definitely think that the stress and uncertainty that these factors have brought in they particularly require additional support uh that will be my opinion yeah See, that's very true in fact if we talk about because you know when we were kids and or maybe you know when our like our parents were like in their generation when they were actually uh, bringing up us like nursing us up over yeah. at that time they didn't have those challenges they had different challenges oh. but right exactly. now these challenges are somewhere entirely linked with uh, technology and everything that is creating a negative impact over things yeah absolutely because life was simpler back then it was not tech laden but now yeah. tech is a huge part and we can't do without uh, digitizing our kids per se but yeah. the fine balance goes off because we've not learned better is where additional support comes in because if we talk about when we were kids we know we were actually playing games in parks or maybe playgrounds or maybe just road side we were playing yeah. games like that but right now we talk about kids do not want to go out they just want to be glued towards their phones their tablets their laptops anything like that or maybe the tv screens and that is some way creating yeah. that negative impact 
and that balance is required these days if we talk about absolutely it. i agree okay Okay. So, Dr. Mehma, if you can tell me, like, you know, uh, as screen time is increasing among toddlers and babies, so how is, is it maybe, you know, negatively impacting their behaviors, their psychology, or maybe their general development, if you talk about? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, there are a lot of things that are changing in terms of the brain development and the development per se in babies. There was a very interesting article I read by UNICEF recently that said that, you know, babies need humans, they don't need screens, <laughs> which I absolutely agree to. Because what screens have done is, like you said, babies need an iPad, they need an audiobook playing when they're eating food, they need to have a music system going on when they're traveling, unlike us, where we needed to watch trees sit by the road, get dirty in the mud. So everything has changed in terms of how they spend their time in the day. What that has led to in terms of development is that excessive screen exposures reduced attention spans. It highly impacts the kid's focus because you're constantly consuming running images in a layman language. And uh, these on-screen images and messages, they kind of reduce your attention span and they also decrease your focus. But besides these attention issues that babies are having, what screen exposure does also is it curtails your ability to impulse control. Maybe I can simplify it. So for example, if you're not exposing your child to a lot of screen, they start to get bored the boredom leads to frustration. Frustration leads to irritability. And then your child starts to nag that, oh no, just give me something to do. Because if you cut back to 40 years back or 20 years back, not even 40 years back, when digitization was there, but it was not a big thing, we as kids knew that we need to be bored and there is no solution to it. Summer break hits and there is no school. So what do you do? You sit home and just keep saying, I'm getting bored and what to do? What should I do? And our parents used to leave us to get bored. And that was the sanest thing to do because it allowed us to curtail our impulse, resist our reaction times, technically, and then be adept to getting bored, but also have the capability to entertain ourselves. Now, when you've taken away from that, your child needs something to entertain them. Otherwise, they're just bored, plain bored, and then negatively so, because then the thoughts start to come up right from being a kid to adults. I, being a practitioner, consult with a lot of parents having kids right from two years to, say, uh, the teenage right away. And these are the basic issues that kids have started having because the exposure to screen is so much. Not only that, so besides, like I said, attention span, yes, your focus, then your ability to impulse control, which is very important. But lastly, and most importantly, it also reduces empathy. Now, I as a human being need to see what is the reaction of my parent when I say something to them on face to understand, okay, emotions change when I say something and the response is a no or a yes or whatever but now because of the screens I only see auto recorded emotions so I don't have the capacity as a kid to even form empathy which is a big fallout because your uh, resilience as an individual your understanding of human behavior your understanding of life in general for survival mode depends on how much empathy you can cultivate and not too much can be done like you said earlier when somebody grows up, not a lot can be undone. So as kids, there is time to build on empathy, on build on resilience, building resistance, trying to have much focus and attention. But high screen exposures are taking away from all of this. So there is a huge uh, developmental fallout because of screen exposure. And they learn by imitation so much. A large part of a toddler's life is dependent on imitation. So if you're exposing them to media that they're not supposed to be exposed to, there is no way of exhibiting off normal behaviors, uh, not abnormal primarily, but their behavior starts to become unusual than a usual kid would have. So yeah, screens are pretty hazardous in that sense, if not balanced accurately.
family needs to work as an ecosystem to kind of raise the kid uh, in a particular healthy manner. If yeah. everyone's on a different page, <laughs> the toddler in itself has an unhealthy environment to be brought up uh, yeah. in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, very rightly said. Okay. So like right now, what are the current guidelines do you feel that you know they should be for different age groups so that screen time is quite curtailed and limited for them? Sure. So there are a lot of organizational bodies that lay down guidelines. But what I personally refer to is the AACAP, which is the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Uh, there are global guidelines laid down by them and bases them for a kid up to 18 months. That is one and a half year. There primarily needs to be no screen time. <laughs> it would come as a surprise to parents because they use screens maximum with the age group. But ideally, there should be no screen time for them, except for video chatting, if at all a parent is living distant. And, you know, attachment styles is also something that needs to form while the child is growing up. And if they don't see a parent figure, uh, the mother or the father very regularly or frequently, video chat is the only feature you could use with a kid up till one and a half years. But there is no screen time required for children till one and a half years. For Children from one and a half to two years, you could have a screen time, some screen time, but less than one hour primarily. And that has to be very carefully monitored. You need to be in the vicinity of the kid when the kid is looking at the screen. The content needs to be highly educational per se. So only storybooks, audio guided playbooks, other materials, rhymes, so that the kids uh, sensory integration also starts to take place in that sense. Only these are the sorts of content and the time exposure required for a kid up till uh, two years primarily. For two to five years also, the guideline doesn't change really. It has to be regulated till up till one hour in the day. But the content has to be again very high quality. There has to be no content like the content that exists today and the exposure that there is there need not be any exposure to content which is not educational per se and available on screen because you cannot really control what the kid grasps out of it. Uh, since that kid does not have the capacity to put words to their emotions, so you wouldn't be able to understand as a parent that what did the child learn out of looking at that content. So you have to be very careful in what you expose your child to. If you miss this foundation period of zero to six years of age, then there is a lot of difficulty in regulating your child's screen behavior later on uh, as parents. And that's exactly when parents start to complain, by the way, that I can't get hold of my child's screen times now. Tell me what to do. But unfortunately, there's not too much that you can do after that. So that's a, these are the current guidelines, by the way, by CAP. So parents, I hope you learned a lot from part one. Stay tuned. Part two is going to be released soon. We will be bringing you more such content from best industry experts so that we can help you shape up your baby's future in the right manner. So what are you waiting for? Like, share and comment on this video so that other parents can also be benefited from the same. For more such content, subscribe to our channel.